I know you and your team are working hard to create a safe return to school. And I know the steps outlined here are easy to say, but difficult to implement. They will require extraordinary effort and flexibility. But working thoughtfully and together, we can do what we can to allow students to return to school as safely as possible. The CDC has created overall guidance, as well as guidance tailored to the transmission level in your area to help child care programs, schools, and their partners understand how to help prevent COVID-19 and react quickly when a case is identified. We're going to cover the CDC's general guidance, but you will need to check with your state and local governments for additional guidance. Big picture, the CDC says the best way to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is through social distancing and disinfection. While we've all heard about wearing face coverings, washing our hands, and keeping six feet apart, today we're gonna to see how we do those and much more in a busy school environment. And while we cannot discuss every possible scenario, we will cover some of the most common. Let's start with masks. The CDC and OSHA are advising all wear simple cloth face coverings to slow the spread of the virus. They are meant to protect other people in case the wearer is unknowingly infected, since many people carry COVID-19 but do not have symptoms. Face coverings may be challenging for students, especially younger students, to wear all day at school. But given how important they are to reducing transmission, you should encourage students to wear them when six feet of separation is difficult to maintain, which in most schools is almost always. Information should be provided to staff and students on proper use, removal, and washing of cloth face coverings. It is recommended to demonstrate this to students. Post signs on how to stop the spread of COVID-19 properly wash hands, promote everyday protective measures, and properly wear a face covering. A link for some signage is in the downloadable resources area. For staff and older children who can safely use hand sanitizer, ensure that adequate supplies are available to support healthy hygiene, including soap, hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol, paper towels, tissues, and a feasible, no-touch trash cans. Key times to clean hands include before, during, and after preparing food, before eating, after going to the bathroom, after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing, before and after work, before and after breaks, and after touching frequently touched surfaces, such as handles and handrails, before putting on a mask, and after touching or removing your mask, and always avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth. Using warm water and soap for at least 20 seconds is key. Ensure you use a generous amount of soap and water and get all areas of your hands, front and back, in between fingers, and underneath nails. Cold water is not as effective as warm water, but it's better than no water at all. To dry, use clean paper towels and avoid using dryers, which do not dry hands as thoroughly as paper towels. Use the paper towel to turn off the faucet and use the paper towel to unlock and open the door when finished using the restroom. Note that alcohol-based hand rubs do not work effectively if hands are visibly soiled. If hands are visibly soiled, either plain or antimicrobial soap and water should be used first. When performing hand hygiene with an alcohol-based hand rub, apply product to the palm of one hand and rub hands together, covering all surfaces of hands and fingers until hands are dry. If hands feel dry after rubbing together for 10 to 15 seconds, it is likely you did not apply a sufficient amount of the product. This may require two or three rounds. If so, consider adjusting the amount of sanitizer that is released with each application. Alcohol-based hand rubs must contain other ingredients such as chlorhexidine to achieve long-lasting effectiveness. Current evidence suggests that SARS-CoV-2 may remain viable for hours to days, including three hours in the air, 24 hours on cardboard, two to three days on plastic, and four days on wood. Unfortunately, we do not know how long it survives on fabric, shoes, or hair at this current time. It is important to clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces within the school, outside areas, and on school buses at least daily, as well as shared objects between uses. For example, door handles, sink handles, and drinking fountains. 
Let's go over proper disinfecting procedures with either the spray, wipe, spray, or wipe, dispose, wipe method. And then I'll show you some examples of how to disinfect surfaces. Always start with a clean surface, otherwise disinfection could be compromised. The CDC recommends the following methods for liquid disinfectant, also known as sprays and aerosols, and disposable disinfectant, also known as wipes. Use products that meet EPA's criteria for use against SARS-CoV-2. These include diluted household bleach solutions or alcohol solutions with at least 70% alcohol and are appropriate for this surface. Follow training on manufacturer's directions for use. For liquid disinfectant, use the spray, wipe, spray method. Spray the surface with the disinfectant and wipe it using a disposable towel to clean the surface, followed by another spray to disinfect the surface. For disposable disinfectant, instead of the familiar circular pattern, use the wipe, discard, wipe method. Use one wipe to clean the surface, discard the wipe, and use a second wipe to disinfect the surface. Wipe in a straight line, then fold and wipe the rest. Wear the personal protective equipment, or PPE, required for using the cleaning and disinfection products, according to the product manufacturer's instructions. After removing PPE, you should wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. For disinfecting electronics, follow the manufacturer's instructions. If no manufacturer guidance is available, it is usually okay to disinfect touch screens with wipes or spray containing at least 70% alcohol, but again, you should confirm independently. Be sure to dry surfaces thoroughly to avoid pooling of liquids and use the spray, wipe, spray method or the wipe, discard, wipe method we demonstrated earlier. Phone touchscreens can usually be cleaned using disinfectant wipes, but check with the maker of your phone first. Use a speakerphone when possible or headset touch-free devices to reduce the need to hold the device to your face. If used often, your device will require frequent disinfecting, but most need only be wiped down once or twice a day. For example, at your lunch break and the end of the day. And most aftermarket covers are wipeable. Ideally, it is best to not share devices. However, if the school resources require the use of shared devices, for example, iPads, laptops, copiers, laminating machines, etc., ensure each person is disinfecting before and after each use. For light switches, thermostats, handles and handrails, and the like, use the spray wipe spray method or the wipe discard wipe method. Longer term motion activated lights and foot handles or even motion activated doors help keep employees and students healthy even after we get through COVID-19. For keys and key cards, use the spray wipe spray or the wipe discard wipe method, including the holders, fobs, rings, etc. When disinfecting desks, sinks, Counters, bathrooms, toilets, floors, and any other surface, diluted, unexpired household bleach solutions can be used. For diluted bleach, be sure to use at least 1,000 ppms of sodium hypochlorite. Please see the resources area of the training for a dilution recipe. And be sure to follow instructions for application and ensure a contact time of 1 to 15 minutes depending on the manufacturer's recommendation. Wear disposable gloves when cleaning and disinfecting surfaces. Gloves should be discarded after each cleaning. If reusable gloves are used, those gloves should be dedicated for cleaning and disinfection of surfaces for COVID-19 and should not be used for other purposes. Here's how to put on and remove gloves safely. Wash your hands immediately before putting on and after removal of gloves. Gloves might have small holes or tears that are not noticeable and can increase the risk of contamination and exposure to microorganisms. For proper removal of gloves, grasp the outside of one glove at the wrist. Do not touch your bare skin. Peel the glove away from your body, pulling it inside out. Hold the glove you just removed in the gloved hand. 
Peel off the second glove by putting your fingers inside the glove at the top of your wrist. Turn the second glove inside out while pulling it away from your body, leaving the first glove inside the second. Dispose of the gloves safely. Do not reuse the gloves. Again, clean your hands with soap and water immediately after removing gloves. Budgets are always tight, but to the extent it's feasible, try to ensure adequate supplies to minimize the sharing of high-touch materials like art supplies, books, and electronic devices. Or if these must be shared, limit use to one group of children at a time and clean and disinfect between each group. If food is offered at any event, instruct parents, legal guardians, or food service staff to arrange pre-packaged boxes or bags for each attendee instead of a buffet or family-style meal. Avoid the sharing of utensils. If before, sharing was caring. Now, not sharing is caring. Keep each child's belongings separated from others and in individually labeled containers, cubbies, or areas and taken home each day and cleaned. You will want student and staff groupings to be as static as possible by having the same group of children stay with the same staff. For younger children, that should be all day. And as much as possible for older children, restrict mixing between groups and cancel all field trips, intergroup events, and most extracurricular activities. You will need to limit gatherings to those that can maintain social distancing, support proper hand hygiene, restrict non-essential visitors, volunteers, and activities involving multiple groups at the same time, and restrict attendance of those from higher transmission areas that are still in the more restrictive step or phase one. You will want to space seating and desks at least six feet apart. Turn desks to face in the same direction rather than facing each other, or have students sit on only one side of tables and spaced apart. Discipline and behavior are unique to each school and district, but you will want to devise a plan for corrective action before it comes up so that you aren't caught flat-footed when a student refuses to comply with, say, social distancing requirements. If anyone tests positive, work with school administrators, nurses, and other healthcare providers to identify an isolation room or area to separate anyone who exhibits COVID-like symptoms. Inform local health officials, staff, and families immediately of a possible case while maintaining confidentiality consistent with federal and state privacy laws. Inform anyone who is sick not to return until they have met CDC criteria to discontinue home isolation. If a person does not have symptoms, follow appropriate CDC guidance for home isolation. Inform those who have had close contact to a person diagnosed with COVID-19 to stay home and self-monitor for symptoms and to follow CDC guidance if symptoms develop. Close off areas used by a sick person and do not use before cleaning and disinfection. Wait 24 hours before you clean and disinfect. If it is not possible to wait 24 hours, wait as long as possible and ensure safe and correct application of disinfectants and keep disinfectant products away from children.